Ananda and One Fine Night Translated by Bhikkhu Sujato So I have heard. At one time the Buddha was staying near Sarvati in Jeta's Grove, Anatta Pindika's monastery. Now at that time, Venerable Ananda was educating, encouraging, firing up and inspiring the mendicants in the assembly hall with a Dhamma talk on the topic of the recitation passage and analysis of one fine night. Then in the late afternoon, the Buddha came out of retreat, went to the assembly hall where he sat on the seat spread out and addressed the mendicants. Who was inspiring the mendicants with a talk on the recitation passage and analysis of one fine night? It was Venerable Ananda, sir. Then the Buddha said to the Venerable Ananda, But in what way were you inspiring the mendicants with a talk on the recitation passage and analysis of one fine night? I was doing so in this way, sir, replied Ananda. Don't run back to the past. Don't hope for the future. What's past is left behind. The future's not arrived. And phenomena in the present are clearly seen in every case. Knowing this, foster it, unfaltering, unshakable. Today's the day to keenly work. Who knows? Tomorrow may bring death. For there is no bargain to be struck with death and his mighty hordes. The peaceful sage explained it's those who keenly meditate like this, not slacking off by night or day, who truly have that one fine night. And how do you run back to the past? You must a delight there, thinking, I had such form in the past, I had such feeling, perception, choice, consciousness in the past. That's how you run back to the past. And how do you not run back to the past? You don't muster delight there thinking, I had such form in the past, I had such feeling, perception, choice, consciousness in the past. That's how you don't run back to the past. And how do you hope for the future? You must a delight there thinking, May I have such form in the future? May I have such feeling, perception, choice, consciousness in the future? That's how you hope for the future. And how do you not hope for the future? You don't must a delight there thinking, May I have such form in the future? May I have such feeling? perception, choice, consciousness in the future. That's how you don't hope for the future. And how do you falter amid presently arisen phenomena? It's when an uneducated, ordinary person has not seen the noble ones and is neither skilled nor trained in their teaching. They've not seen good persons and are neither skilled nor trained in their teaching. They regard form as self Self as having form, form in self, or self in form. They regard feeling as self, self as having feeling, feeling in self, or self in feeling. They regard perception as self, self as having perception, perception in self, or self in perception. They regard choices as self, Self as having choices, choices in self, or self in choices. They regard consciousness as self, self as having consciousness, consciousness in self, or self in consciousness. That's how you falter amid presently arisen phenomena. And how do you not falter amid presently arisen phenomena? It's when an educated noble disciple has seen the noble ones, and is skilled and trained in their teaching. They've seen good persons and are skilled and trained in their teaching. 
They don't regard form as self, self as having form, form in self, or self in form. They don't regard feeling as self, self as having feeling, feeling in self, or self in feeling. They don't regard perception as self, self as having perception, perception in self, or self in perception. They don't regard choices as self, self as having choices, choices in self, or self in choices. They don't regard consciousness as self, self as having consciousness, consciousness in self, or self in consciousness. That's how you don't falter amid presently arisen phenomena. Don't run back to the past. Don't hope for the future. What's past is left behind. The future's not arrived. And phenomena in the present are clearly seen in every case. Knowing this, foster it. Unfaltering, unshakable. Today's the day to keenly work. Who knows? Tomorrow may bring death. For there is no bargain to be struck with death and his mighty hordes. The peaceful sage explained it's those who keenly meditate like this, not slacking off by night or day, who truly have that one fine night. That's how I was inspiring the mendicants with a talk on the recitation passage and analysis of one fine night. Good, good, Ananda. It's good that you were inspiring the mendicants with a talk on the recitation passage and analysis of one fine night. That is what the Buddha said. Satisfied, Venerable Ananda was happy with what the Buddha said.